Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We've got some uh, modifications going on the Audi as per usual. Uh, some new parts showed up from Integrated and I got another part from O34 that I happened to get off another Audi owner. They didn't have the car anymore, so we're doing a strut tower brace because why not? In this video though, we're gonna be doing the integrated front mount intercooler. The strut tower brace and the turbo inlet is gonna be in the next video. So make sure you check that one out when it comes out too. But for today, we've got the Audi behind me. We've got the intercooler. Let's see what we got going on. All right, so here we have integrated engineering's FDS intercooler. You can see a little swag they give you, brackets, bolts, everything like that, but there's the intercooler there. You're probably asking yourself, what is FDS? Well, it's flow distribution system. All right, so basically what FDS does is that it takes the inlet air and evenly distributes it throughout the entire core. Uh, inside the intakes, there's actually fins that help the air go up and across as where typically it would come in and it would kind of stick to this bottom area and the top of the, uh, the core wouldn't really be used all that much. So there should be an improvement over my current CTS intercooler. I, uh, I imagine so. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have air more evenly distributed throughout the entire core there. So I think it'll be a nice upgrade. All right, so as you can see, we've got the Audi. It's in the garage. Everything is still together. The bumper's still on and intact. Uh, you can maybe just see a little bit of the CTS intercooler. It's back there. That's going to be coming out. To save time on this video, and everybody has bumper removal videos, I think I've even done one before when I did the CTS intercooler, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do some YouTube magic. Alright, there we go. Bumper is removed. You can see the intercooler, sort of, that I'll be taking off. I might try to take the cross member off this time. I'm going to see what all is involved with that real quick, and I'll let you guys know. Looks like it's a couple of bolts, but there might be some rivets here and here. Don't really want to drill anything out, so let's see what happens, and uh, I'll show you guys the result. All right, so I actually got the cross member off. It was pretty easy. Here, let me show you real quick. So basically, there's these two 13 mils up top, 13 mil at the bottom. And then there was a T30 right here that held on. this bracket to the plastic uh, support so that came off pretty easily I did need to use a little pry tool back here just to kind of get in between and get it out because it's in there pretty good so again two 13 mils on each side one T30 on each side and uh, a little persuasion and it comes right out originally my thought was going to be to pull the bumper and drive up on the ramps but I don't think I'm gonna have to now it looks like there's gonna be plenty of room drop this thing out underneath the plastic uh, radiator support support here and put the new one in. All right, just like that, CTS one is out. So I'll just loosen the clamps on each side. I do have a CTS charge wave on that side, so a slightly different clamp, but same idea. I did pull out these plastic rubber, I'm gonna call them airflow directors. Yeah, we'll go with that. Anyways, they were up in here, and they do go, and the intercooler fits around there on the outside, so I wanted to pull that out of the way. Those are just held in with two little clips. And that's it. So on the ground, with the crash bar off, you can go ahead and remove this without needing to jack up the car, ride up on ramps, anything like that at all. So before I throw in the integrated piece, I wanted to show you guys the difference between the integrated and the CTS. So you can see thickness wise they're about the same. However, the integrated one is taller and the end tanks are definitely different. But again, integrated does have built in that FDS that's in here and CTS, from what I understand, it's just gonna be wide open. So the integrated piece should be a lot more efficient. And again, I am working with them on the channel now, so I wanted to run, you know, as much of their stuff as I can. Uh, and they've been in the industry for a long, long time, and their parts are uh, very, very solid. So, just wanted to show you the difference there. And then, just to show you, I did go ahead and wrap that in the gloss black that I have, just to clean it up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get the CTS piece out of the way, and get started on the integrated piece. 
All right, so one thing I was unaware of is that you actually remove this piece here as well. So there's a T30 here and here and on the other side. And then you also want to remove the T30 from there and then pull that off. Integrated bracketry is actually pretty cool. So these pieces go on the bottom and fit in the factory spot where the intercooler sat before. So they're just supports. And then these two bolt there and then on the other side and then bolt up here. So good thing uh, their instructions were super clear. I looked it up real quick just to make sure. And that is what you have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get this last bolt out um, following their instructions. I'll go ahead and link everything below, of course. So if you guys want to undertake this project, feel very confident doing it. This is super easy to do on your own. Not a lot of, his, of work is involved. Honestly, the hardest part is probably just getting the bumper off of the car. But honestly, not that bad once you do it once or twice. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pop this off, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's off. All right, so I got the brackets on. I just wanted to kind of show you before I pop this thing in. So... Again, following integrated instructions, you can see the orientation of the brackets. And then down here is the support that will actually sit right in that slot. Just like OEM, that goes there, that goes there, and then there's the other bracket down there. So, you know, follow the instructions, tighten everything up, make sure you get everything removed that needs to be removed. And it's really, honestly, very simple to do. All right, we got you set up on the tripod. Just gonna grab my gloves. Let's go. So, you can see where it sits down in that slot, and then what we'll do is actually push this back, and we're going to use these holes here. Again, integrated supply hardware and a spacer. So once this is mounted, we'll sit up there nice and flush just like that. Alright, so here's the hardware. You've got a spacer that goes between the intercooler and the radiator shroud, and the bolts that are going to go through the intercooler bracket, through the spacer into the shroud. All right, so as you can see, this is secured, secured to the support there on the side. Right here, there's the spacer, and the screw goes through. Same with here, goes through, and screws into this hole that's already there. And then down there, of course, it's sitting on the bracket. So that baby's not going anywhere. Next is tightening up the hoses on either side, uh, putting everything back on the front here, crash support and everything. And that's it. All right, guys, so we are pretty much all back together. I've got the crash bar in place. I need to bolt the 13 mils, uh, secure them still. Put the T30s back in. We've got this support back in, hood latch is hooked back up, everything is good to go. And you can see the nicely wrapped crash bar, looks a lot better without all the rock chips and everything in it, just from the uh, the paint and the road. It's unbelievable how many rock chips I got on this thing, and I barely even drive it. I mean, I work from home, so I don't get a whole lot of road time, but this thing was just riddled with rock chips. I probably didn't put enough coats on it, so that's probably my fault. But we've got the hoses hooked back up. For those wondering, the CTS charge pipe does work with the integrated intercooler, as you can see, using CTS is a silicone coupler. And I did want to let uh, Miles know, a buddy from across the pond here in Florida today, it was probably in the 60s, might be 70 right now, I'm not too sure, but it's very comfortable, my friend. Uh, you gotta come visit soon. That wraps up the integrated engineering intercooler install. Lots of eyes there. We got the bumper back on. Everything's covered up. The crash bar looks a lot better now. So stay tuned for the next video. Uh, I'm gonna be installing the integrated engineering turbo inlet pipe 
which is this, but that's a CTS. Integrated up there. I've already started taking it apart, but again, tune in for the next video. Uh, I'll show you how to remove the CTS one, which is essentially like the stock one, install the integrated engineering one, and then actually made it up to this CTS intake because integrated does not currently have their carbon fiber intakes in stock. And that is the next thing I'm going to get for this. Once they're back in stock, I believe next month is what I'm hearing. So fingers crossed on that. So uh, thanks again for tuning in. Massive thanks to Integrated Engineering for supporting me on this build. I uh, couldn't do any of this without you guys. So again, thank you. If you like these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. All that good stuff. And until next time, y'all take care.